Since the late 1960s, British police officers have all benefited from two-way radio. Whilst two-way radio has been used in police vehicles even longer, and most forces installed a permanent systems during the first half of the 1950s, the benefit of radio from a force HQ to its mobile units had first been appreciated as early as the 1920s, and in those days it was a very primitive system using only Morse code. Over the years, the hardware and corresponding operational frequencies that the police have used have changed massively. They have appeared on AM, on FM, and during the 70s and early 80s, they could be found locally here in Oxfordshire on a normal FM radio, nestled just above BBC Radio 1 on about 100 MHz. As a radio ham back in the 80s, lots of the old redundant police radios came onto the market and were widely available for purchase and modification. Here in the UK, the company Pi Telecom were responsible for manufacturing much of this equipment. The PTC122 VHF walkie phones were used in the early 1950s to provide low power comms for beat police. The unit had a six valve crystal controlled AM transceiver and was slung around the neck of the operator akin to a rather large and heavy shoebox hanging around their neck. It had a built in mic and external phones with a flexi tape antenna. It came in at three and six channel versions with internal and external batteries. As this channel primarily focuses on mobile radio, I'm going to stick with the, the, with the theme here because I understand obviously there were other radios involved in this such as the Westminster. At this time, technology changed, so did the equipment. The launch of the Pi Pocket phone range saw the equipment shrink and become much more suitable for use in action. Many people will remember the popular UK TV show The Professionals, which featured the iconic PF8 radio, which actually bought more resembled an early electronic shaver than a radio. If you are interested, there is a great wealth of information on these radios available over at the pitelecomhistory.org website. Head over there for a look. I can say, having had personal experience with Pi equipment, it is very well made. In particular, the pocket foam range, which were also sealed and protected with resin, which did make modification a little tricky. As already mentioned, during this period there was no scrambling or encoding of police transmissions and it was technically legal here in the UK to listen in to the police. However, acting upon any information that was received could land you in trouble. The Wireless Telegraphy Act of 1949 wasn't exactly clear on the inclusion of police radio listening. However, it was made clear in the 2006 Act, which repealed the Act of 1949. Unauthorised reception. There are two criminal offences under Section 48 of the Wireless Telegraphy Act 2006 relating to unauthorised reception. I'm just going to read you one here. The first one, Offence 1. It is an offence if a person other otherwise than the under the authority of a designated person uses wireless te telegraphy apparatus with intent to obtain information as to the content, sender or addressee of any message whether sent by means of wireless telegraphy or not of which neither the person using the apparatus nor a person on whose belief he is acting is an intended recipient. This means that it is illegal to listen to anything other than general reception transmissions unless you are either a licensed user of the frequencies in question or have been specifically authorised to do so by a designated person. In essence, in the UK at least, it is illegal to listen into the police and any other private tele telecommunications for that matter. However, the Act does not cover unintended reception of police radio transmissions, which is rather the point of this video. I often get asked if it is possible to listen in to the police transmissions, and up until quite recently my answer has always been no, this is not possible. My buddy Ringway Manchester has covered this in a video, and I'm going to leave a link to that video in the description. The police currently use an encrypted radio system called Airwave, which uses the radio technology system called TETRA, which stands for Terrestrial Trunk Radio, and was formerly known as Trans-European Trunked Radio, which is a radio system designed for use by governmental agencies to provide secure encrypted two-way radio transmissions. The TETRA radio system uses time division multiple access technology with four user channels on one radio carrier, and a 25 kHz spacing between the carriers. This makes it inherently more difficult than its predecessors in the way that it uses the frequency spectrum. 
more efficient sorry, than its predecessors. Data can be transmitted at 7.2 kilobits per second for a single channel. This can be increased fourfold to 28.8 kilobits per second when multi-slot operation is employed. There is another variant also in use which is called Tetra 2 which brings in extra frequency in, uh, frequencies and voice codecs, improving transmission range and voice clarity. In free space, unit to unit ranges can be as high as 60 kilometers. Tetra is now considered a very poor system by modern day mobile standards and the UK government are looking for alternatives. Also, it has been reported that hackers have managed to compromise the encryption of the system, leading many forces to recommend to their officers that calls of high security must be made via GSM mobile phones. The very low data rate of just 7.2 kilobits per second is also a factor here, as this rate lowers even more where the signal strength drops. Comms become very patchy and unreliable. There were plans to put up this data rate by a factor of 10, However, it is understood that the government are looking at a solution that uses 4G technology, but using a private network. Either way, it's going to be over four billion UK pounds spent to implement this. Currently, the UK police are using radios from various manufacturers. Common ones include the Motorola MTH and MTL range and the Supera SRH range. Sometimes these radios are stolen or lost in activity and do appear on the second-hand market. A few points to note though, lost or stolen radios, much like mobile phones, will immediately be deactivated from the network. So don't think that you can buy one and tune in. Furthermore, there are likely other legal issues you might experience if you are caught in the possession of one. You can of course buy a new radio from any Tetra radio supplier and have it programmed for your own use with the appropriate business license. Police Tetra transmissions can be picked up in the UHF 70cm band locally on approximately 450 to 460 MHz, which is also a band frequented by many other digital transmissions too, such as digital business radios and security firms. Shopwatch and Pubwatch, which can be amusing to listen to at times, the majority of these transmissions are digital now but are not encrypted so can be listened into by a suitable digital scanner or an SDR receiver with the appropriate plugins like DSD Plus and virtual audio cable. Some of the cheap Chinese radios can be programmed to transmit on this frequency and this is why I always promote that my viewers change the channels that the cheap Chinese radios come with. However, one concern is that criminals could easily jam police radios locally using a handful of cheap Chinese radios. That's something I have not seen mentioned anyway yet, but it is a very real threat, in my opinion, and part of the reason the government should be looking at an alternative. So to answer the overlying question, can you listen to the police in the UK? And the answer is technically yes, and I will explain what I mean by that. As already mentioned, Shopwatch and Pubwatch and other security firms use analogue and digital radios in their daily operations, and recently, whilst listening into some local shopping centre digital DMR radio comms, something strange happened. There were some local youths who had been reported by one of the security guards as making physical threats against her. So the police were called and I could hear all of the security guards and CCTV control room operators coordinate with each other as they tried to isolate the gang inside the shopping centre so they could be detained whilst the police arrived. Then something strange happened. The attending police officer could be heard on the same channel discussing with the security guards the details of the suspects. This went on for quite a while. I had no way of knowing if the officer was using one of the member of staff's radios or if they were able to select non-Tetra channels on their own radio equipment to help enable this coordination. I'm not sure if anyone knows this. Please leave something in the comments section if you do. Of course, in many other countries like the US, Police transmissions are not scrambled and there are plenty of well-established mobile phone apps that let you listen in. Whilst I understand police people's uh, intrigue with listening into the police, the actual reality of it is it's actually quite boring. I've been listening in since the 70s and police activity was pretty dull. It's not very glamorous. Most of the time it's catapult tree type stuff or anti-social behaviour calls. Just listen to the US police scanners and you will see it's not that much fun. Listening into the shop and pub watch transmissions, as you'll see later, is much more fun as they are not bound by the same rules as the police 
and some of the chatter can be highly entertaining. So, if people ask you, it is technically possible to listen in to the police in the UK as I've just described. Criminals would of course find a benefit to be able to listen in to the Tetra system and there is a suggestion that it has already been compromised. However, the more recent news about it being compromised by 26-year-old Dejan Ornig, a 26-year-old Slovenian student, isn't quite what it seems. He was almost jailed for finding a security flaw in the Slovenian Tetra system. He did this using a cheap $10 SDR and the open source Osmocon Tetra decoder software. He had used the software and was surprised that he could actually hear clear transmissions between officers, leading him in the belief that the software was actually able to hack the Tetra equipment. However, in reality what he had discovered was that in many cases the operators and people responsible for setting up the radios simply had not switched on the encryption in the first place. Most officers carry mobile phones as a backup and as already mentioned high security level conversations are most often made via the much more secure GSM network. But cellular jamming combined with local Tetra band jamming is not beyond the realms of unscrupulous individuals. I would hope no such folks are the subscribers of mine though. Scanning is a fun hobby and you can have so much fun just listening into so many other forms of comms. People get really tied up with wanting to bust this Tetra police thing but I don't see the point. Get your SDR set up with the digital plugins and that opens up a whole new world. I will leave a link in the description below to a video that shows you how to set up DSD Plus and also a link to the RTL SDR guide which explains fully how to use a $10 SDR as a very effective scanner. Overall, have fun and stay legal and really think about people's privacy, especially when replaying scanned conversations, private ones that are encrypted, over YouTube. There is a growing DECT phone hacking movement and it seems people think it's okay to air that private footage. Please don't and although I have recordings here I won't be airing them. Keep an ear out for your local police. From reading some of the scanner forums I have found it's quite a regular occurrence for the police to appear on pub and shop watch frequencies. So have a tune in and have fun. Also it's more likely these transmissions will be more entertaining than a cat up the tree type stuff. Keep it safe and keep it legal guys and please have some respect for your local police force too. If you have been, thanks for watching. 73. Yeah, it's the ones from Friday, it's that fat guy, so uh, yeah, no car nicking and the mummy's about somewhere. Yeah, I want to everyone know the mum is a really scrawny uh, skeletal lookalike. Um, yeah, the dad is a bit of a meat as the sun was seen in, um, on Friday. Hey, do you want to join me at Kids Next Day? That's not reckon I use this one. I can do, but it's slower in the bit of cold. I'm not going to get your skinny butt out here. Yes, boss.